Hi everyone, trust you all are doing well. And in this lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to work on our store method. And what we've done in the previous one is we created our route and we added the purifier, installed the purifier, and we updated our form right here. So what we will do in this one, we will just create our store method and just work on this one. All right. Um, normally what we will do is we will do the validation in here. So like this, this to validate. All right, to validate the request. And then we will just return an array of all the items that we want to validate. But what I want to do is I will, will create our own store request that will handle all the validation on its own, its own little file. And then we will just bring it in here. All right, so let's do that. All right, I just php artisan help make a request basically to see what all the things that you need in order to make a request all right so you just put in the name in our case what we want to do is php artisan make a request and the request will basically be store uh, let's do thread store request like this all right so we click enter all right, so the request was created successfully. So how do we find that? Under app, ACP, you will see we have a new folder that's created called request. Then you will have our thread store request right here. All right, so under that, let me just save this right here. So under that, we'll basically have our rules that we want to return right here. All right, so we obviously set the authorized to true. Okay. And then we will update the rules right here. All right. The first rule that will obviously be that will be for the title. So let's just do the title like this. All right. The title. Now, what I like to do is I like to put it in an array instead of the pipe icons between each other. I don't like to do that. I like to use an array. Now, the first one will be required. Okay. Then we put in a max. Uh, max amount of characters and the value that you want to add there let's just say 60 all right so that will be for the title the next one will be for the body okay not like that the body the body will put also to be required okay and that will be a max of 250 i don't want to do a big post in there Let's say 300, 300 for now. Okay, you can obviously add uh, your own little extra validation in here. For you can obviously add a minimum, let's say minimum five. I just don't want uh, one word in there. Also, you can add a min in here as well, like this a minimum, no, min of five again. So that's the minimum that the person can type in. All right, and then the next part that we want to do is we want to do the tags. Okay, the tags must be an array. Okay, so we can add that in there. Okay, the next one that we can add is the tags dot star. Come on, star right there. Come on. Just give us some space so that you guys can easily see everything in here. All right, so obviously we've got the comma right there. So the tags, what we want to do is we want to check if they exist. Exist in the tags table. We just want to check the ID right here. Okay. All right, so that's all our validation right there and the category as well. So let's just uh, not forget that. The category, uh, category. We're just going to put in that is also required. All right, the tag is not required, but the category is definitely required. All right, so let's leave it as that. So that's our rules right there. Okay. So the next thing that we can do is we go to our thread controller right here, and we actually bring in that thread store request all right just make sure it's imported at the top okay as you can see my class is already imported right there just make sure it's imported at the top right there 
Okay, so we got our validation set up. So let's see if it works. If we just do return, come on, the request. As we can see, we got our validation right here. Uh, to say the title is required, the category fields required, obviously nothing for the tags and the description right here. So, so obviously something is wrong with this one, so the validation doesn't show. So as you can see, we didn't add any errors right there, so we're just going to copy the form error and just put it in the underneath this and just do it for the body, the body like this. Okay, so let's go back to the browser, refresh, and just press the, just select the tag and just do a create. Let's see if we get all the errors. As you can see, the title is giving us an error and the body field is required. So everything works. So what if we type in one word, just uh, one in there, because remember we require five. So if we do a create, now you can see the title must be at least five characters. So we know our validation is working. All right, so that is all very good. All right, so the next one that we're going to do is we need to actually store this information. Okay. All right. We can obviously add a little bit of some nice information right here. We can actually add, if you guys remember, the Laravel.io that we said we're going to work with. They actually got additional uh, methods underneath the rules right here where we can actually you get the subject and get the body or get the trigger and stuff like that. Let me just show you an example. Uh, let me just go to this. Okay. Then we can actually get the body like this. All right. So when we actually do the request, we're actually calling on this body method inside that. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave it the rules as is. And then I'm just going to work in the controller itself. Let me know in the comment section if you want me to do that. So I will obviously update it in the next video. So if you guys want that to be done, just let me know. All right. But, but for me, it doesn't make a difference. Um, yes. All right. It's just extra code, but it doesn't really make a difference for me. All right. So let's quickly create now a thread as well. I just opened my category controller quickly. If you guys remember, this is what we have done when we created the category. All right. I'm just going to do a little bit different. So this is basically the one setup where we did the validation, everything inside it, and we just return, okay, the round. Now in this case, what I will do is I'll create a new thread, okay, so a little bit differently. So that we learn different methods. We did it with when we did the block series as well, different methods so that you guys can pick and, and see what works best for you and stuff like that, okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to create a new, a different method. All right, so what we will do is we will create a variable called thread and equal that to new uh, thread like this. Okay. Then we obviously could have done this and just created the methods in there. All right. So new thread, and then we can add the methods in there, but that's not what I will do. I'll just create equal that to basically the thread right there. All right. And then we're just going to put in the thread uh, title. Okay. All right, the thread title. Uh, just the property. Let's just call in the property, not the method. All right, we're going to equal that to basically the request uh, title. Okay. And we're going to do that for all the inputs and thread uh, body. Let's do the slack as well, the, yeah, the body. We're going to add the purify in a second, okay? So that will be equal to the request, the request body, okay? And then obviously now we need to do the slack, so thread slack. We're going to equal that to the reason why I'm putting spaces in there so that you guys can easily see it, all right? So you see the difference. 
right? Um, here we need for the slug, we're just going to do the str and then we just bring in the slug, okay? And then we're going to do the request title, okay? So we're going to create the slug from the title. So that's why I wanted to move that up there, all right? Just make sure you import your the illuminate support str string right there. Just make sure you import it at the top. In order to do that, I press Control Alt and I and to import it at the top. And that is PHP name resolver to do that. All right, we're obviously going to add the purifier over this right now in a second. But before we do that, I just want to add the other fields as well. So thread. All right, the next one that we need is we got the title, we got the slug, we got that. And now the next thing is we're going to need the category ID. Okay, and that I'm just leaving spaces so that you guys can easily see it. That's the only reason I do it. So let me just do like the request uh, category like this. Okay, like that. Now we obviously need to add our thread uh, for our author ID. So author ID that is going to equal to the auth. And then we can just do the ID like this. Okay. Or what you can do, you can do auth user and then obviously just do the ID like this. Both works. Okay, so I'm just going to do the auth ID, all right? Now, the next thing is we just want to save the thread. Save it. Okay, then after we save it, we just want to sync the tag. So thread.sync. And then we just want to sync the tags. All right, and that will be obviously the request. Request uh, tags. Okay, and in here is what we want to do is that must be tags. We just want to sync them like this. Right, the tags is obviously a method inside our hashtag trait that we created. Okay, so that is the method that we're calling on the thread right there, the thread hashtags, and we just want to sync that tags. Right, obviously, let's just do it like this. We're not calling on a method there. We're just calling on the tags property. All right. So now the next thing that we need is we need to add the purify in there. But before I do that, I just want to return a redirect to a route. The route that I want to go to is basically the threads dot index. Okay, so where all the threads are with success. Success and the success message is thread created. Sword and sweet. So if you want to add an extra custom changes to that, you can do that as well. So if you want to change this to be anything else, you can change that. All right. So let's add the purifier in there. All right. So let's add our purifier right here. So we're just going to put in a bracket. Encapsulator, and we're just going to do purifier, and we just want to bring in the facade purifier right there, and then we're just going to call on the clean method. As you can see, it brings us the clean instance, All right? So we just want to do that as well. So purify clean of that body. Now, next thing, just make sure you import your auth uh, facade right here. So the auth facade, but just make sure you import it. Otherwise, you're going to get an error. And as you can see, I already imported that at the top. The purifier just make sure you import the namespace there as well right now the thing is i was just thinking we already have our sync tags okay we just as you can see we already created the method of sync tags in our hashtags right here we already got the sync tags right there so we don't have to do the sync tags we already created that trait right there okay so now we got everything, so we created our thread, we got our validation, then we created a slug, then we purify that WYSIWYG, and then we do the category ID and the auth ID, then we save it, and then we 
do the synchronizing of the tags and then let me do this right here right so let's see if it all works and yes let's go to the browser quickly so let's create one all right let's create a title some uh, title so this is more than one word five characters so let's put it under general just let's just use choose two tags and this is a uh, body tags okay let's do it create now, as you see it created the post so let's go to the last post right here as you can see we got our post done right there six seconds ago so if we go to our database right here and if we refresh as you can see we got our taggables right here we could set up at the tag id all of that works so we sync the tags right there and let's go to the threads let's go to the last one now as you can see remember what from the previous lesson it saves the WYSIWYG address saves actually the div elements inside the elements actually of html inside the database then it renders that okay so so now that's saved up as you can see the author id is john doe and the category id is general so it's all saved up all right so that's all good so let's go back to visual studio code now the other thing that i want to do is i don't want the, um, the post to actually show the first one uh, at the end i actually want them to show in, in a different order Okay, so what I want to do is I want to order them by the ID in descending order. So we can do order by. Okay, then we can do order it by the ID. And then we just want to do it in descending DSC like here. All right, and obviously we still want to paginate it as well. All right, so let's see if it all works. Let's go to the browser. As you can see, the last one will be now first and then it will just go down in that order all right so that's kind of how we want to do things and we obviously want to update that the different categories be shown here all right and i will do that in the next episode so we if the tags are there they, i just want them to show it right here okay so thank you guys for watching if you like the video please give it a like if you don't please give it a dislike the likes are just the for youtube to let other people find the video because if you like it people other people might also find it useful and if you don't please give it a dislike then other people will not have to find it <laughs> thank you guys for watching and i'll see you in the next one leave some positive or negative feedback i try to improve my videos as i can i'm having troubles with my pc at the moment that's why the uploads have been a little bit dips and dabs at the moment uh, since the update, some things are not very nice on my PC at the moment. All right, thank you guys for watching and see you in the next one. Goodbye.